Only a few more games that Antonio Daniels and Jay Larnay will be playing basketball together. But one thing will endure the rest of their lives, their friendship. Eric Ritchie has more. For the past four years, they have been the mainstay in the Bowling Green backcourt. Antonio Daniels with his high flying dunks. Jay Larinaga with his high arcing threes. Since meeting on a recruiting trip for Antonio's late brother, Chris, the two have developed a bond that extends far beyond friendship. The speed of life is an overdrive for these two seniors. Postseason tournaments, graduation, the pro draft. It is at precisely this time that we ask them to put life on hold. Reflect, if you will, on the past four years at Bowling Green that have made them one of the best backcourt tandems the school has ever seen. Even when talking about their favorite memories of Anderson Arena, they each point to the other. I'd say the uh, Eastern Michigan game last year when Antonio hit the game winning shot. The uh, Toledo game last year when Antonio hit the game winning shot. I had to agree with Jay with the uh, Eastern Michigan uh, game from a year ago because of all the emotions that were going through everybody at the time. And also the acting game from this year really meant a lot too. Um, just uh, the game that Jay played really meant a lot to me and I know it meant a lot to Chris also. Like I told you guys, I don't consider it a friendship anymore. I consider it much stronger than a friendship. Um, because I have a friendship with a lot of people on this campus, but um, me and Jay's relationship goes much deeper than that because of all we've been through here together. Um, I think he knows me better than anyone else at this school. And um, like I said, we've been through so much. Um, I consider Jay like a brother. And um, I lost one, but in a way, through these four years, I gained another one. I really think about Antonio a lot, kind of like you think about a brother, even though they're not there. You just kind of wonder how they're feeling on a certain day or what they're doing. And so I think that kind of stuff has really been special for me. Daniels enters the MAC tournament ranked second on the school's all-time assist list and third in scoring and steals. Jay will go down as the most prolific three-point shooter to ever wear the orange and brown. But for all of their effort, the two long for more. We really just want the opportunity to show how good we are. There's a, I think there's a lot of great teams in the country, but I think in our league, there are teams as good as anyone. And it's not just the team, but the individual players. I don't know if there's a better point guard in the country than Antonio, but because of a lack of publicity, a lack of games on TV, we just don't get that kind of respect. So, I mean, we just kind of look at the NCAA as a way for us to show what we can do to the rest of the country. That's a definite goal of ours. That's been a goal of ours ever since we got here uh, to go postseason, and especially the NCAA tournament. But I mean, this team is really focused. Uh, they matured over a year. Um, we got some guys that improved so much over the summer. Uh, Tony Reed coming back. Um, Tony Reed coming in to help us. DeMar coming back, you know, from academic trouble and everything. I mean, it's just this year it's really like a family and everything's really falling together um, on and off the court. Okay, Jay, you know we see the behind the scenes play all the time. You guys joke around quite a bit, quite humorous. Give me some stories, maybe about Antonio that you can remember offhand. One of probably the best stories I have about Antonio is actually not when we were in college, but when we were in high school. And uh, I was, it was our senior year. And I hadn't seen him probably in about a year since summer camp, or the year before. And uh, all of a sudden, it was the middle of the season, I get a call, it's right around Christmas time. And it's Antonio. He's like, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing, getting ready to go to Columbus playing this uh, basketball tournament. He's like, yeah, we play you in the first round. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah? What, how are you doing everything? Because when, uh, like when we first started just hanging out, Antonio was like, I was basically the same size as I am now, and Antonio was like 5'4", and that's with like a three-inch flat top. <laughs> so uh, he starts telling me, he's like, yeah, I'm averaging like 25 points and about three dunks a game. I'm like, how is this 5'3 guy get averaging three dunks a game? So uh, that was really, I think, when our relationship started to really be a lot stronger. We ended up playing down in the tournament, and he had two dunks, and he had grown he had a little bit. Yeah, he had, gr he had grown a little bit and <laughs> shaved a couple inches off his flat top. For all of their competitiveness, the two teammates do go head-to-head -head on occasion, in particular on road trips, playing the PlayStation video game. 
and who usually wins? Turn the camera this way. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go, lean it right here. Yeah, there you go, lean it right here. Yeah. He's got bigger hands, so the controller is much easier for him to handle. And besides, I haven't played nearly as many games because yeah, it's his Jay, game. Jay, it's my PlayStation, so and Jay like really just started playing like I don't know, maybe three weeks ago or something like that. So you know, he, he had a rocky start. You know, hasn't he beat him by like 50 <laughs> the first game? But you know, he, he's you know cut. He beat a couple people, so you know he's getting a little better. All right, Antonio, Saturday, it's obviously going to be an emotional time for you. Uh, what's going to be going through your mind the last time that they announce your name? Antonio Daniels, number 33, the crowd's going to be going nuts. What's going to be going through your mind? I think I'll be emotional. I hope I don't cry. Um, but, I mean, there'll be a lot of things running through my mind, like a lot of memories, <clears throat> past memories and things like that. Um, I've been through so much here, um, positive and negative. And um, it's going to be kind of hard just to... You know, just to kind of walk away, so to speak. Um, I met some fantastic people here at Bowling Green. The Laranegas have just been like a second family to me. And um, the Heats, who are now at uh, Michigan State, also um, did so much in helping me mature as a person and as a basketball player here at Bowling Green. I'm, to be honest, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, if I'll be really happy or if I'll be really sad. But I, mean, I just know I've had a really great time just being able to be close to my father and be close to just some great guys and uh, I mean it's really I just had a great time and I think the memories that I'm gonna have are gonna just be great. Like I said I'm just never planning to lose contact with the near naked family at all. Yeah I mean it's like a family like Tom said it's just like a family it's not even if you go move away you still keep in contact with relatives and it's gonna be the same way I'm just it'll be a different relationship but I think it'll probably even be even stronger than it is now. Maybe we'll be on the same team a year from now. <laughs> For the Jim Laranega Show, I'm Eric Ritchie.